Hi, I'm Sophie Littlefield and I'm here to talk to you about Garden of Stones coming in January of 2013 from Mira. Garden of Stones tell the story of Lucy Takeda who is a Japanese American girl who went to Manzanar relocation camp during World War II and about her mother Miyako Takeda uh, who was widowed shortly be going, before going to the camp. Garden of Stones is a departure from the books I've written before. It does have a crime element, but it focuses more on the lives of the, of the men and women who were interned inside the camp and a historical period, which I've never done before. This is my first foray into historical fiction, um, although I've brought some of the themes that I've written about in, others, in other books that I've written. So my crime series features a middle-aged woman um, and talks about themes of motherhood and revenge and protection, and some of those themes are in Gardens of Stones as well. I've always loved the freedom to write in different genres, and my feeling is that there is much more that unites different genres of fiction than divides it. So even though this story is a little bit uh, more focused on history, uh, it still deals with the themes of ordinary people in extraordinary circumstances. In this case, the ordinary people were the Japanese in the 1940s uh, who had by and large made homes all over California and the United States um, forced into the extraordinary circumstances of war and relocation. I never really thought that I would be writing about the subject of World War II or internment, but one time I was coming back from a trip with my writing partner and friend Juliet Blackwell and we were talking about growing up in California which I did not, um, and learning about the history of World War II. I grew up in the Midwest where we, we really didn't focus on the experience of the Japanese Americans at that time, um, but Juliet had learned a lot more about it and she was telling me about these camps that were distributed all over the West uh, and what it was like for the people up and down the coast who were su suspected of being spies, even though they lived among communities of, of other Americans. And I found that so fascinating and horrifying. We really don't have a similar, um, we don't have a similar story in the Midwest um, during those times. So I was fascinated by that. And Manzanar itself is set in the valley, in the Inyo County Valley, which is a desert valley near where I used to travel uh, to Yosemite. Our family goes to Yosemite every year, so I know that area a little bit. It's very beautiful, but very stark, and it's also very harsh. So while you're between two different mountain ranges, the summers are extremely hot, dusty, and prone to windstorms, and the winters are brutal, cold, and very unfamiliar to those who've who have lived along coastal California. When I started researching Japanese internment, I was pleased to find that there are a lot of books and a lot of uh, his, uh, phot photographic records available. Uh, the War Relocation Department, which was formed for the purpose of in interning the Japanese, hired several photographers, among them Ansel Adams and Dorothea Lang, who is not nearly as well known, but who is uh, a sort of social photographer of the times and she did make very subtle commentary within her photographic work and that was sort of my introduction to the Manzanar and other camp experience. Um, she did not make overt criticism of the of the national policies but when you read between the lines it's there and in some of her images uh, you can see the stirring of dissent and, and, and certainly the sad record of those who came here. So then I started reading first person accounts of which there are many and there have been documentaries and even movies made on the subject but mostly what I relied on uh, were the first person accounts. Um, the people that were interned there are largely dying off now. Um, people who are children in the camps are still alive and uh, they're telling their stories which is really great for the rest of us so we can sort of retain the um, emotional impact of the times. In the camp there was an orphanage. Three orphanages were closed to um, during the war. Uh, three Japanese orphanages in Los Angeles and San Francisco and I read an account of what it was like for the children who came to Manzanar and lived in what was called the children's village there and that was especially moving to me and I sort of drew on that when I was talking about what a child's experience might be within, within the camps. So most of my books do have themes of parenthood and specifically motherhood and um, daughters. A lot of times I'm writing about daughters. I myself have a daughter and a son. Uh, but in this case, I had an additional theme, which was physical beauty. One of the most chilling things that I read um, in the first person experiences of those who were interned was the experience of young girls, adolescents, who upon release from the camps found them confronted with some very confusing messages about their beauty. It turns out that they were an object of sexual desire of white men and uh, 
having just been despised, an object of derision for several years, I think that was very confusing and very painful. And so that got me thinking about ideas of beauty. And Miyako, who is the mother in the story, is very beautiful and uh, was married to a much older man who died um, before, being, before they were interned. And so she came into the camp as a new widow and was, was vulnerable because of her beauty and her station. And so I thought a lot about what such a woman might do to protect her own daughter who was growing up to resemble her and to maybe face some of the same challenges that she, sh that she faced and what she might do to prevent her from, from being abused. Three things I'd like you to know about this book. First of all, it does feature the relationship between women, and I have um, I had a great time because I came into this book through my best friend, and our conversations really um, inspired me to write the book. I developed a friendship between two adult women within the novel. She's not a major character, the best friend, but I really enjoyed developing that friendship, especially because it came about in times of stress and. Um, just thinking about how women survive together and how they rely upon them, uh, each other to get through tough times. So that's the first one. Secondly, there is a crime in the story and um, I have been working for a long time now on making my mysteries a little more mysterious. So working backwards from the crime and trying to make it more of a whodunit was a challenge for me and I'm hoping that I succeed at this time. And the third thing is that the story actually takes place in two time periods. One is the 1940s, wartime, and the other is several years later in 1979. And I was a child of the 70s, so I had a great time going back and looking through all the visuals from that era and trying to incorporate them. And um, so I'm hoping that other people might remember the 70s and see it reflected accurately within the book.